All right, welcome back. So we're finishing up our conversation about uh, one of the essentials of the faith, and that is the Godhead, the triune God, um, the Christian God that is three in one and one in three, um, that is Father, Son, and Spirit. I want to start us off with a quote. Faith in God, then, is not at all the same as the kind of logical certainty that we attain in Euclidean geometry. God is not the conclusion to a process of reasoning or the solution to a mathematical problem. Faith is not the supposition that something might be true, but instead is the assurance that someone is there. Because faith is not logical certainty, but a personal relationship. And this personal relationship is at yet very incomplete in each of us and needs continually to develop further, but it is by no means impossible for faith to coexist with doubt. So we see two things at work in this quote. Um, that was a quote by a, uh, a Eastern Orthodox um, father, Callistos Ware. Um, he wrote a book called The Orthodox Way. That's what that's out of. Uh, but we see two things at work in here. One, the mystery of God. That, that God is this mysterious creator that we somehow get to begin to dip our toe in and enjoy. Um, and as we do so, we're never going to fully wrap our heads around him and solve him and figure him out like he's some sort of logical problem or puzzle to be understood. Uh, the Trinity is never going to be understood in terms of analogies. Um, he's not like water, right, where he can be a solid and a liquid and a gas. Um, he's not like a triangle. Uh, he's not like a, a father and a son who's also an uncle, right? It, no matter what analogy we use, we're always going to fall short and fall into error. Like, that's just not something we can do, and it's not something we should try and do. And I think we should be okay with that. We're not people who think that our faith is, a, is about a religious system. We're not people who are bought into this idea that we somehow need to have all the right answers so that we can be saved. That's, that's not who we are. That's not what Christianity is. It's not what it's ever been. But Christianity is, a, is genuinely about a relationship with God. It's a relationship with Jesus. Like the whole reason Jesus came was to unite us to the Father, to bring us back into this relationship with him. We, we have this broken and fractured relationship with him and with each other, and Jesus has come to restore all of that. That at the end of the day, if we're not somehow more in love with God now than we were at, before the beginning of this, then we, we might be missing the point. And here's why I think that should be no shock to us. We believe in one God who's eternally existed in three persons. We believe in a God who at the core of who he is, at his heart and soul, like in the innermost part of his being, he is relational. He is a God who has eternally existed in this eternal communion uh, with himself that, that's somehow different than if I was locked in a room for all of eternity having a conversation with myself. That would make me crazy. Right, that the, no, that the, the Father and the Son and the Spirit, um, I think it's Tim Keller who describes it as this eternal dance between the three persons of the Trinity. That if that's who God is, it should not shock us that He cares so much about our relationship with Him and our relationship with other people. If that's who God is, it should not shock us that He came down Himself to suffer and die in order to buy us back, to bring us back to himself. Why would this surprise us? Why would this shock us, right? If God is at his core a relational being, uh, then that means that we are at our cores relational beings and redemption at its core is uh, redemption, the process, not the church, even though the church as well, that the process of redemption at its core is a process of restoring relationship and redemption, the church, at its core, ought to be a place that at its core is about relationships. If we're doing anything else, we're, we're missing the freaking point, right? It's not about how much I can know about God. It's about how much I can know God. And the more I know God, the more I fall flat on my butt and I go, I don't, the more I think I know about you, the less I realize I actually know there is so much more to know. 
And he's this infinite ocean uh, that I could dive in and swim in and drink. And I want to, and I want you to want to as well. So the implications of the Trinity. God is absolutely and utterly concerned with mankind's relationships. God is absolutely and utterly concerned um, with how we treat one another. Um, he's absolutely and utterly concerned with our affection for him and for his creatures. Um, he cares about our relationship uh, with him and he cares about our relationship with his creation. Not just other people, even though I think that's primary. Uh, I think he cares about our relationship to, to nature, to creation. Um, what are we doing? What are we caring about? other than ourselves. That, that if you look at selfishness, which is in many ways the root of all sin, um, it's I don't want anything else, or I don't want to care about anything else. I want to just care about me. I want to get mine, come at all costs, do whatever it takes. Right? The heart of that is a denial of the Trinity. Right? If the Father were to deny the Son and the Spirit, that would be selfishness. It would, it would fracture who God is. Right? So that if God at his heart is in this eternal state of, of sharing and love, then it makes sense that our sin problem is a selfishness problem. And it makes sense that the way to get that right is to live a life of selflessness. Um, to, to figure out how to live in right relationship, how to live in shalom, how to live in wholeness and peace with God, with our neighbor, with our spouses, with our kids, right, with those around us. How do I live at peace and shalom uh, in the broken systems of the world? How do I live at peace and shalom uh, somehow with creation versus uh, using it to serve my own needs and purposes? So that's number one. God is utterly concerned with mankind's relationships. Number two. AC just turned on. Don't know if you can hear that. If so, I apologize. Uh, number two. God does not view things from an individualistic point of view. Right? God is not looking at the world through the lens of a selfish, self-centered perspective. Uh, and again, that's our tendency. I tend to want to look at the world from the perspective of me and myself, and it can be really hard for me to see someone else's point or perspective. God doesn't see the world that way. God is eternally seeing the world in a communal sense. Um, he is seeing the world uh, from the perspective of a community, even if it's a community of three. Uh, and so lastly, the characteristics of a Christian are such that they are meant to be displayed in community. That, right, while I'm supposed to have a personal relationship with God, uh, my personal relationship with God ought to serve to uh, restore and redeem relationships. My personal relationship with God is, yes, about me and Him, but only in so much as me and Him are being restored to the point where I can go out and be a restorer. Um, I think it's uh, John who puts it this way, if you say that you love God and you hate your brother, you're a liar. It's... The idea that I, me, myself, and God uh, is not what I was created for. I was created to be a creature in community. So God does not see the world from an individualistic perspective, and God does not expect us to live individualistic lives. That we are meant to display love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control, uh, among others. And that's when it gets really hard. right? It's really easy to be a joyful person when I'm in my room, listening to worship music by myself. It's a lot harder when I'm sitting on 6.10 at 4.30 in the afternoon, right? Um, and finally, this points us to the fact that this is not an individual personal faith. Um, and I know that goes against so much of what we've been taught. And, I, and I'm not saying that there is not an element of an individual personal um, uh, responsibility and individual personal like relationship between us and God like Jesus himself withdraws and he has a personal individual conversations uh, conversations with God multiple times and that's a part of this but that is not it right and if you think that's it there's so much more to this um, I, I know I used to be one of those who would come to church on Sunday uh, would come in a little bit late, listen, worship, listen to the sermon, leave a little bit early and go home because I didn't want to talk to other people. And then I came to realize that I need people. 
and they need me. Right? The Holy Spirit uh, does not just indwell you. The Holy Spirit does not just indwell me. The Holy Spirit indwells us. The Holy Spirit lives within the church, and I need the Holy Spirit within you as much as you need the Holy Spirit that's within me. We need each other. Uh, this is a faith that's meant to be lived out in actual community. This is why we have hub groups. It's why we weirdly stick around. We show up early and we stay late after church. Like we want to be a place where we actually are genuinely pursuing healthy, rich spiritual lives in community. Because while we can do it on our own, uh, that there's something there's something broken about that. That's not a hundred percent what it ought to be. There's something still missing if we're just doing it on our own. And so hopefully this has helped. Um, hopefully you have a better understanding uh, of who God is. I really genuinely hope that this has somehow led you uh, into a, a spirit and a heart of worship and, uh, and giving you some food for thought as far as the implications go. Um, helping you better identify like, this is why the church cares about congregation. This is why the church cares about gathering together and being among brothers and sisters. Uh, this is why love is such a crucial part of what it means to be a Christian. Because love is such a crucial part of who God is. And so, um, so, yeah, hope this has helped. Go in friendship with God and in friendship with one another, and we'll see you around.